Welcome to All About Videography, my name is Joe Levy, and in this video I will introduce you to a spatznut which I found to be an excellent tool when shooting interviews. I will show you the weaknesses and where it shines as well how you can utilize it when shooting an interview. Now there are many brands of this concept and I think the most popular one is the Aperture which is more industrial but also more expensive. Godox came with one as well but it's a combo which means that you cannot use their uh, snoot without their light. Uh, which could be a problem if you want to use a brighter light, but I think that overall it's a great system. Uh, some snoots have flags so you can shape the light. Some have a lens mount so you can uh, use your own lenses. I will leave links below for all the combinations, that way you guys can check it yourself. Now, this specific snoot is the well-making brand. It is the most basic one that I've seen on Amazon. The main difference is that the more expensive ones have interchangeable lenses which means that you're not limited to how wide or narrow the light is. Now, this one has a fixed lens uh, and it comes with uh, six gobos. The first one is the classic window shape. Second one is a window blinds. The third one can also pass as a window blinds. The fourth one is a 20 dots in a square. The fifth one is a flare and the last one is a slit. Now, it's also come with the four gels, blue, red, yellow and green. There is a built-in aperture, so you can control the size of the spotlight. Let me show you uh, how it works. First of all, it is a Bowen mount, so it can work with a variety of uh, all video lights. Now the snoot comes with a tray holder with uh, two clips to hold the gobo and the color gel. The tray holds inside the snoot itself with uh, two washers with springs that push it against a flange and keep it from coming out. Now to adjust the shape focus or the blurness of the shape, you need to push the lens in or out and then lock it with the uh, thumb screw. Just to mention the build quality of the snoot is very good. It's all metal, nothing plastic over here. In order to turn the snoot, you're gonna have to release the four uh, thumb screws over here by the Bowen mount. And that's pretty much it, there's uh, not much to it. So why a videographer needs a snoot with gobos? Well, I can tell personally, I got it primarily to uh, use for interviews or talking head videos. Um, many times I will shoot an interview in a room that has not much going on in it. Either the walls are uh, wide empty or the background is not relevant to the, uh, to the interview itself. A solution will be move some tables and decoration around the room to fill the empty walls, which I've done it before, but it was not fun and it took a lot of my time. A second option is to use an RGB light to color the wall. A third option will be to use a Kukulores. But now I found the fourth option, which is to use a snoot with gobos. So in a case of an empty white wall, a shape can add the missing dimension to the background. And if the background needs to uh, be disguised, then any gobo with a pattern will do the job. Now. I'm not dismissing all the other options I mentioned before. There's nothing wrong with it and sometimes moving furniture to, uh, to decorate the room or using a Kukulores will be the only way. So using Snoot is not necessarily to be a replacement to the other options, but I do think it will be the most dominant tool that I will use for interviews. And for the most part, it will replace the Kukulores just because of the advantage in size and portability. I mean, you could have 10, 20, or even 50 shapes and patterns of gobos in your uh, pocket to use it any way you want. On the other hand, uh, a Kukulores is much bigger and more expensive, about 10 times the price of a gobo. But there is limitation to a snoot with a, a gobo. The snoot needs to be far from the wall for the light to spread all over the background. I mean, the closer the snoot to the, the wall, the smaller the shape will be. So it will be a challenge to use it if you are shooting in a small space. Let me show you how it works and how big are the shapes on the wall from different distances. This is the classic window global shape from about 20 feet away. The same window from 12 feet away. Blinds from 20 feet away blinds from 12 feet away. This is the other type of blinds from 20 feet away. Same gobo from 12 feet away. The dots gobo from 20 feet away. The same gobo from the same distance, but I blurred it with uh, 
the snoot lens. This is the flare gobo from 20 feet away, same snoot but blurred. The same gobo from 12 feet away. And the last gobo is the slit. And to be honest, I'm not sure how to use this specific gobo shape. If anyone has a suggestion, then please leave a comment. So after testing all the gobos from different distances, I found that distance is not an issue. The issue will be only if you shoot a wide shot and trying to cover the entire wall with a gobo pattern. Another thing that I found is that the gobos that came with these snoots are a little bit smaller. And I'm not talking about the dimension of the gobo, I'm talking about the shape that is on the gobo. Uh, so I tried to test it. What I did, I created, I made a, a gobo from a cardboard. And as a, you can see, I'm not that creative, but I used the entire real estate of the gobo. And when I tested, when I reflected against the wall, I noticed that it's about 30% bigger than the, the gobos that came with this uh, snoot. As well, I checked on Amazon to see if there are other brands of gobos. And I found one of the brands I found is uh, Godox that actually, uh, they have a package of six gobos for $17. You know, it's a side note, but their gobos, they are using the entire real estate of the gobo. Bottom line, this is another tool to add to your toolbox. And what I mean by that, it doesn't mean that you have to use it every time. It means it's right there for you to use. If you want to be a creative in a way or another way, or sometimes it will save the day. I will add it to my toolbox. And I think that you should consider one as well, especially if you are a professional videographer or regardless if you, uh, if you find it to be uh, uh, something that you can use. And that's it. If you found this video informative, please thumbs up, like this video as well. Uh, please consider subscribing to this channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.